Howdy hackers and welcome to Fairlight TV. Uh, this time we will have a little follow up on one of the previous episodes. One of the previous episodes was hacking our way through uh, Hunter's Moon or basically ha hacking our ways through Cyberload. And there has been requests on ensuring uh, that we also elaborate on the details of hacking through that manually. Um, so what you can do is use the native C64. Uh, and if we're assuming that we would be using a native C64, my first go-to option would be using one of the transfers. So I already have pre-prepared routines for transferring cyberload. And that means I don't need to hack my way through it. I basically hack my way through it once and following times I will be using the, the, the tool that I developed myself or that I've been given by somebody else. Uh, yeah, there is a cyber tool that you can fetch from CSDB that uh, I did. Um, so I did that, but during the first years until I um, basically experienced the first cyber load that uh, the tools couldn't handle, I used one by Synchro, I think, uh, Agile. Uh, or possibly K12, that, one of those. I'm, it could be that one was uh, for the actual main loader and one was the level loader and one did one and the other did the other. But, uh, well, credits to, <laughs> to K12 and Synchro of Agile for the tool I used for the first uh, number of years before I learned to, or I had to, hack Cyberload manually on my own. Okay, but what we have today is, is an emulated environment. So my go-to option today would be hacking my way, or not even hacking my way through it. I would use Tapex to extract the files and then I would be done. Today we would use some sort of interim. Uh, we would use the, um, the, the monitor in Vice to do it manually and I will take th you through it step by step. So. The benefit of Vice, and I've said that this, I've said this a number of times already in the show, and uh, it's so much easier to use the monitor in in Vice because it's absolutely invisible to the running programs. Whereas if you set breakpoints inside uh, Action Replay on the native machine, that is actually interfering with memory and that uh, will interfere with the exclusive, exclusive or decryption routines. So you need to take a number of measures to avoid that. And uh, for the purpose of this, that would take way too long. So this is a shortcut to doing it properly, but you would sort of get the sense of what doing it properly means. So stay tuned and let's go. Okay, here we go. Uh, <laughs> you will see a rather interesting effect. I use uh, green as a background for my uh, for my freezer. So if I do this, um, my background is actually green, but it's the same green as my green screen, so you will not see it. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a little extra thing. Uh, we won't dive into that and I hope this is good enough and I will not show my freezer screen that much. So uh, I will need to do one thing first. I will create an empty disk image. Uh, so on my desktop, I will create uh, Hunter D64. Okay, yeah, there we go. If you were quick, you would see there was, there's already an hm.d64 when I did my dry run. That's what uh, the result of that was. Uh, okay, I will try to keep some sort of eye contact with you, but bear with me if I need to look at my docs here. And I will also need to watch my keyboard because I'm not one of the qualified persons to actually type and watch something else at the same time. Sorry about that. And I hope that didn't disappoint you that much. So we'll dropping Hunter's Moon here uh, and uh, we will do that. And now it wants to press play and tape. So let's first go through what will happen. The first thing that will happen is that the Commodore uh, kernel ROM would now use the built-in functions to extract the header of the tape and then it will load the, the little file. And these two segments are then part of the of loader one. 
that loader would load sort of level two. So the confusing part here is that you would have a loader um, and then that will load the next one and it will do that in steps. So the first one is CBM uh, buff uh, loader loads the tape buffer and uh, one file, which is the what will then be booted as the, um, the, the well, first loader. That is still very short, uh, but that one loads the second loader. And then the second loader loads the third loader, which is the full kind of game loader. Um, so and <laughs> so it goes in steps, and, and I will try to be consistent in saying that, but sometimes it gets a bit confusing that you are you are loading level uh, loader three but you are using level two uh, loader two so bear with me if i don't get that right all the time but um, i would hope i i could nail that for you so the first thing we will do is enter the monitor and we will set the break for address 002 and uh, you can set just break two it feels confusing coming from the c64 omitting the first initial zeros, so I tend to write that the full 16-bit address. Okay, so, and uh, we will also run fast load here, so, uh, or, so everything would be fast and you wouldn't have to wait. Okay, so what happened here was that it loaded the first, the buffer, and it loaded the file. And then it launched the uh, the auto start for this. Uh, so, um, and this is when everything is done. It has also loaded um, the the second loader, and that is placed on address two in memory. So that's where we had our breakpoint. So, the the first portion is already done, and now we're here. And now we can actually take a look at how the loader looks in a decrypted form. So, o two nine. F, I believe, yes. So if you've seen the previous episode or the, the, the episode two, two episodes back, I think, which is about uh, tape uh, loaders and cracking tape loaders, have another look at that one if you want to know what we are doing uh, now, because that will, that will elaborate on, on the segments and where they go in memory. But but here is the, the file that was loaded. It's, and then that would extend into the tape buffer. So it becomes a big consecutive uh, chunk of memory or big, it's, it's really small. But anyway, so this is what it, uh, it has been doing. This part is showing this cyber load now loading Hunter's Moon. This is here. Uh, and then you hear, you see here on O2DC uh, a decryption routine, and that has been run already, right? So this is after that has been decrypting stuff. Uh, it has decrypted the portion on O350. I guess, uh, yeah, it it doesn't go back to O350. It it stops at O351 because there is no. Uh, branch on plus it branches on uh, not equal to zero so it, it increments decre sorry decrements to zero and then it triggers but then it doesn't execute when when y is zero so uh, 0351 is the last address it decrypts 0351 so and this is sort of the rest of that also in fully decrypted form uh, and you see it checks something here and, and executes uh, an FCE2, uh, which is a reset. So it has detected something it didn't like, and then it detects uh, that and, and triggers a reset routine. One of the other commands is, is super handy. It's uh, this. Um, it's CPU history. So we can see... Uh, where it executed before triggering the um, the, the breakpoint here. So the breakpoint is on address 2, as I said before, and it, it seemingly it has done something. Uh, it, it, it executes a, a routine from subroutine. So it pushed something on the stack and then that point to address 2. Okay, so this is what happened before. Um, yeah, so this is the part I wanted to elaborate on before that. Let me also just say that the target here is extracting the picture because there is a loading picture 
and the main file, okay? So these are the two files that I aim to extract. Um, I'm going to cheat. I always cheat when I can, or I, do, I wouldn't say cheat. I use uh, an easier option when one is available. I don't think there is an extra merit in doing it cumbersomely or, or some additional work for no apparent purpose in the end. So you would never see if I did this or that, just that the end result is perfect. And then I take the easiest route to that. So I will actually use the action replay save picture uh, option for, for uh, extracting the picture. Um, but let's get to that. So now uh, now we've also launched address 2. So now we can also take a look at that. Uh, so this is address 2. So, so this is the second loader. <laughs> uh, and you see here there is also a decrypt uh, or a decrypt routine here. Uh, I should move my monitor down so I don't interfere with that with my picture. Okay. So what you see here is that, oh, sorry, here, uh, on address 67, uh, so this little routine here from 64 and 67, this one is iterating, uh, excluding ORing um, from 072, and then also exclusive ORing on 0314, again, using some other parts of memory that it used before, if you have tampered with that, then this would fail and the boot would fail. That's what all protections are about. Detecting if you did anything uh, to, and also trying to react on that. So anything it will find that you did, uh, it will react on. But but what I'm doing now is, is in the monitor of the, of the emulator and there is no way that that would affect the uh, anything in memory here. So, uh, Let's see if we can see what that memory is doing here. So let's break also on 0073. And we'll let that run. Uh, 062, something like that. Okay, so here is the decryption routine. And, uh, and address 73 is the address just after the decryption has done its part and then it's doing stuff here again and it's doing more stuff and it's doing more stuff and there is a yeah so okay uh we can that should it loads up until uh, let's see e7 so the last routine the last address of this is this one uh, the rest is something else it's garbage or something else um, so this RTS is launching the the next one. So, uh, but I already know where that is. It's uh, break C thousand. Okay, and then let's list the breaks we have. I need to delete those because it will um, it will call the routine again, and uh, and those would be triggered again unless I delete them. So the next. The next point of control I want to uh, to ascertain that I have is on C thousand. Okay. Okay. Here. So, what happened now is that it has loaded this uh, third loader, and that that is the loader that used the memory in blocks. It's the fully fled, full fledged loader system here. So. Uh, yeah, well, we can watch, look through it if you want to see. Mm, yeah, you can just mimic this if you if you fetch um, a copy of uh, the tap file for Hunter's Moon. You can just set the breakpoints as I have done, and you would see this. Yeah, this is more, 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 more. Yes, and now we see you run into crap memory. C three. Okay, so this is still stuff, and here with the FF00, that's typically um, memory after reset, so that is just crap, you don't want that. So normally I would also zero fill memory, but I have fairly good control of that there, there are no 
kind of gaps in the memory I'm loading here, so I don't need to fill anything with memory with with zeros. I can extract the the raw uh, Hunter's Moon file without cleaning anything. Um, I just want to show you one little cute thing. Uh, C two C zero. Hackers, fuck off and die. Oh no, John Twitty, your language. You're not. S this will not go. Uh, go. <laughs> Go out well in in certain populations. You cannot say that. You can really not say that. And and I feel offended by this. No, I don't. Thumbs up, John. Very good work. This is impressive stuff. I really like your loaders. Okay. Uh, so having looked at this in Tapex, uh, I know that it would also load something on O one A zero. So parts of the stack. So I can set the next breakpoint to 01A0. Uh, let's see, and I can also delete the previous one because that's not needed anymore. That's that's overly ambitious to ensure that I don't have any invalid breakpoints there, but uh, let's do that. And now we should just see and wait until the program has loaded. And now I will do this. I will press Alt Z, freezing. Now I am actually inside the emulated machine in the freezer. Let's just hope this works. And I will use picture save. And uh, the routines I have for showing pictures use image system. Um, whatever your routine does, then just save it as that. And um, you would have the, the machine code monitor here inside Action Replay do all the work for you. So I will do F and I will do hm pick something like that okay so anybody arguing that the final cartridge 3 is great well yeah it has its merits but it couldn't do this it couldn't absolutely couldn't do this because it needs ram to work and if you do something like this with with the tfc3 that would garbage parts of the memory and it's not sure that you could restart. Now I can just press F3 and it will restart. Okay, so Hunter's Moon loading and the picture looks nice. So everything had worked. Uh, in my dry run, the picture actually crapped, but uh, it looks fine and it's loading 93, 94, 95. I think it should load to 122 or something like that. Ah, 123. What? Okay, so it failed. Uh, it's probably during my, uh, because of my break into the, uh, setting my breaks there. So uh, we will actually need to do this again. And, uh, and this time it will be really fast. Um, so if you look at break here, uh just list so you see the break the uh the picture file is there on my on my virtual drive the d64 i created at the beginning uh but it seemingly we need to do this again sorry about that that was because of the the freezer um it should load rather fast here well it would take just about a minute let's see if we can rewind or or fast forward it this a bit oh there we go so it called 01a0 and uh, again if you watched the episode in um, about the Using Tapex, you have already seen this routine. It cleans uh, memory. It call it, it sets um, at the bank selection and uh, calls a reset, and then empties the stack from. You can see here from address two and onwards, so it doesn't set address zero and one with this one. And then it's also cleaning address uh, the page two and page three, resetting a few pointers. And then 
uh, yeah, calling uh, another few uh, init routines, and then it fetches address uh, eight eight hundred, and this is because it's going to reset basic, and, uh, and so it's going to set this back. So it it reads that, calls uh, the the basic init, and then puts o uh, eight hundred back. Not really sure that is needed because that's probably zero, but. Uh, and then it sets 31 and then it jumps to 081B. So here, calling 018B is uh, 018B, 1B, <laughs> 081B, whatever I said, 081B. That is starting the program. So let's see what we have in our breaks. We set 081B. We could save it now, it doesn't really matter, but, but uh, so let's allow it to do any reset it wants. Okay, so now this is the first in instruction that it's executing on the file. Uh, and I already know that this file is uh, the, the length of the file because I, I saw that in Tapex. Otherwise, I could have filled the memory at the very end of where it's loading. And then I could tell from there where it's, where it's uh, finished loading because there is probably an FF00, the kind of the, the garbage memory that is uh, the artifact of a reset. So let's just double check that. BC... 60 okay so here you see uh, it's loading to bc 71 uh, and then 72 is garbage um, and i would know that because this is also what tapex told me so this is correct and now we're getting into one of the little things that you can try to remember that if you're using action replay you need to um, and you're saving portions of the memory what you tell as save address is the start address and then the first address after the save so if you save up until fff you can you actually need to save up until 0000, because otherwise the uh, the FFFF byte is gone. That one will not be saved. So it's not include. So it's uh, it's not uh, as as Vice is doing. It's you're saving uh, up until the address given. So that is inclusive of that address, but not anything more. So if I want to save now to BC seventy one, including address BC seventy one, I would need to save to BC. Uh, 71 in uh, in vice monitor but i would need to save to bc 72 if i did it in action replay so save hunter's moon prg and then address 8 because i want to save it on the d64 uh, and this is just for you uh, i would never save it to a virtual disk i would save it to to the the pc file system and nothing else but uh, we'll do it like this bc 71 and then we can see, yes, it's there. Okay, so now I can reset uh, and, and action replay is here. And now I can, okay, let's, let's load. Oh. Okay. And now the scary part. This is frozen with with uh, the expert cartridge. I think that's um, a really a nuance. I would like people not to do that. This is Hunter's Moon being done like this, and uh, yeah, Way of the Exploding Fist is the same. So the next step, if you want to do a proper release of this, is actually to defreeze it. You let the depacker uh, run, and then you would need to be basically somewhere in memory and try to clean it as much as you can and you can't do it perfectly because it's it's basically a freeze that you're working with uh, but let's see let's see if this one will run oh yeah yeah of course the the breakpoints are still there uh, i'll delete those and now we run there we go a perfect copy of hunter's moon now on disk so the next steps you would like to do is hunt for trainers inside the game. We don't have time for hunting a trainer. That might be a second episode. If there are requests, we might do that. 
Uh, and then, as described also in one of the previous episodes, what I would do then is um, I would defreeze this and, and all of that. So let's assume I have a big chunk of memory. I would RLE pack that. Sorry, I would first insert the trainer inside the uh, the raw file, and then I would RLE pack that. And then I will add the intro, and then I would seek and crunch that using Exomizer uh, as a final step. And if I have the memory to do it, I would also include the the file, uh, the, the picture file there to show it. If there is no place in memory or not enough place in memory for that, then, then that would be a separate file. So you would have a separate executable showing the picture. Well whatever. Um, I prefer to keep as few files as possible. But uh, now you've seen me hack my way through Hunter's Moon and extract the main file. And there are a few things that I basically uh, knew in advance and didn't find out during the process. One was the end of the, of the bootable file. And um, yeah, and as you saw, I I could see that from memory, but I, I extracted that kind of information from Tapex, which is the easier option here if you don't want to do the cumbersome way, which I did here. So very nice to have you watching this all the way to the end and uh, looking forward to meeting you in the next episode. And I actually have something rather specific or, or rather uh, yeah, worth the wait coming up possibly next time. Let's see if I manage to squeeze that into the rather tight schedule of people. So uh, stay tuned in this channel and do, you know, share, like and subscribe. <laughs>